A cobbler is shown at the start of the story who is mending shoes one by one. He was quick in working as he was an expert in it. This cobbler is none other than the main character of our story, Max. When he comes out after mending shoes, the owner of the nearby shop that was a barber shop comes out and says, Max, you have grown older. Look up for a girl and get married since when will you spend life alone? Max replies, no. I don't need to get married. I am fine. Later, he moves inside and starts mending shoes. Meanwhile, a goon comes to his shop to get his shoes polished. When Max was polishing his shoes, he started watching the watch of that goon because it seemed nice and expensive to him. The goon has noticed this thing and asks Max, what are you staring at? I have many watches like this, not just this one. I have collected them. They are so expensive that I can buy anything with them, even your whole generation. After getting his shoes polished, he gives Max a pair while saying, these are torn, so sew them. I need them in the evening because I have to wear them at a party. When Max was mending his shoes, his machine sparked. This damages the machine and it turns off so Max calls the mechanic and asks him to repair his machine urgently. The mechanic refused, saying I am busy for two, three and four days and can't repair your machine soon. Max becomes worried hearing this because he has to mend that goon's shoes somehow until the evening. Meanwhile, he remembers that there is an old machine in their basement, his father used it before him, and his grandfather and grandfather's father also used it. Max starts mending that goon's shoes on that machine, he succeeds and then starts waiting for the goon to come, but Max sees the shoe number when he didn't come and it was ten and a half. And he thinks it is my size, let me check while wearing them. As he wears those shoes, he turns into that goon, and when he sees it in the mirror he becomes shocked. As he takes off those shoes, he becomes normal, then he closes the show, and when he returns and wears the shoes, he again changes into a goon. He gets shocked and sits at a place and can't understand what is happening to him. He searches for more pairs of ten and half numbers, he finds them but his outfit doesn't change when he wears them. This time, he was surprised that what I had done with my getup didn't change even after wearing the shoes. He remembers thinking, yes, I mend those goon shoes with this old machine, not with my own machine. Maybe there is magic in it, and then he repairs someone else's shoes with that machine. As he wears those shoes after mending them, he takes on the outfit of the owner of the shoes. After it, he mends many other shoes and tries them because he is having fun whenever his outfit changes. It seems like a baby got a unique toy. He mistakenly wears the shoes of an old man. His face was terrible and injured. When he sees himself in the mirror after taking this getup, his condition worsens because of fear. I don't know what he thinks when he lifts up a girl's high heels. When he wears it after mending, he takes that girl's getup. That lady wasn't young but was of his age, and he became happy seeing her in this getup. Now he goes to the barber shop as an old man to check if he will recognize him or not, but the barber doesn't recognize him, but he becomes happy, and then goes to an expensive hotel, changes his getup and orders expensive food. He enjoys eating, but when it comes to paying the bill, he goes to the washroom and comes in his own getup wearing his shoes. He leaves without paying the bill, and when he was going on the road he saw a rich man who liked his car at first sight. That's why he started chasing him, and later, he went to him as a goon. Then he asks the rich man, what is the size of your shoe? The rich man was afraid of that goon and told him immediately that my size is 10.5. Hearing this, Max said, perfect, now take off your shoes and give them to me, otherwise, I will kill you. He was scared, so he took off his shoes and gave them to him. Now he sits in that man's car after wearing those shoes and enjoys the whole night in it. He enjoys driving the car and was happy because before this he just wore the shoes of ordinary people. Then he goes home, where we see his old mother, whom he loves a lot, but who is sick nowadays. She used to lay down on the bed. He asks his mom, what would you be if you got a chance to be someone in life? His mom replies, nothing my son, I am happy being your mother, but if this would be p possible I would love to have dinner with your dad last time. Now that your father isn't with us, this isn't possible. The next day, a pretty girl visits Max's shop when he is there. She came here to fix her friend's shoes. Max keeps looking at her and says, Ma'am, don't worry, I will fix those shoes in a short time. In the evening, he mends those shoes and wears them. 
then reaches that girl's house in her friend's getup, where she is taking a shower in the washroom. He also moves inside and then remembers that if the shoes are taken off mistakenly and the girl sees his real face, my game will be over and I will also go to jail. He gets scared because of this. He immediately runs to his shop, wears his father's shoes while mending them, and changes into his father, whom he missed a lot, and also loved a lot. He reaches home in his father's getup, where his mom becomes surprised and happy to see her husband alive. After it, they have dinner together, which was his mother's wish, they talk to each other later, Max makes his mom sleep in her room, and he takes off his father's shoes and places them back in the cupboard. The next morning when he goes to wake up her mom, he becomes shocked that his mom is no more. This breaks him, and he starts weeping while sitting near her because he has none in this world except for his mother. He does his mother's funeral, there are many people, and seeing Max sad they gathered to support him. After a few days when he goes to his shop, the goon comes and becomes furious at him. He says, what is your problem? I have been here for the last week, but your shop is always closed. Where were you? And where are my shoes? Have you mended them or not? Max replies, actually my mother passed. That's why I couldn't open the shop. The goon says, oh, that's the matter. Sorry to hear this. Now give me my shoes. Hurry up. But Max says, okay then give me the receipt that I gave you. He says, what receipt? I have no receipt. Max says, okay, if you have no receipt, I have no shoes. Hearing this, the goon becomes furious, so he starts threatening him that if he does not get his shoes by tomorrow, I will kill you and send you to your mother. Then, while sitting there, he keeps on making those receipts. After saying this, his behavior makes Max furious, so he chases him while taking his customer's getup. Now he always keeps people's shoes, so he chases him while changing his outfit so the goon will not suspect him. He discovers that he is a dangerous man while chasing him, who takes money forcefully while beating others. When the goon went for some work, Max moved inside his house in his getup. There he met the goon's friend who became angry with him as the goon's behavior wasn't good with her. She leaves the house. Max searches the house when she leaves and finds a briefcase in which there are guns. He gets shocked to see this. He doesn't know that there is a gun among those guns that gives an electric shock that makes humans faint. Not knowing this, he tests the gun on his hand and gets an electric shock that makes him faint for hours. When he wakes up after hours, he immediately leaves from there, changing his outfit as a goon, but as he opens the door, the real goon is in front. He feels bad to find his clone in his house. He becomes surprised but he pounces at him and punches him hard. He tries to end him, but before this, Max shoots him with that electric gun, and the goon gets an electric shock due to it. He gets faint while falling there, and taking advantage of this, Max ties him with ropes. The goon comes to his senses and finds a boy in front who is obviously Max. He says, Look, I will not harm you, just tell me where you kept your expensive watches. The goon laughs at this and says, I will not tell you, just let me go from here, and then I will kill you. Max says while laughing, are you mad? You have to be free from those ropes you are tied to to kill me. After it, he comes to the goon while taking that lady's getup and starts threatening him while saying, tell me where those watches are, otherwise I will do bad to you. This warning panics the goon. That's why he tells him where the watches are. Max was about to leave after taking the watches. Meanwhile, he sees from the hole in the door that two boys were standing outside who were also goons, so he comes back and asks the goon. Who are they? The goon replies, they are my boys. They can end anyone, anywhere at my one gesture. Max furiously says, shut up and stop admiring yourself. Tell me why they have come here. The goon says, actually, we got a contract to end someone so we have to go take the advance payment. They came here to pick me up. Max asks surprisingly for money. How much advance money? The goon replied, $50,000. Max became happy after hearing this amount. It was like a lottery to him because he hadn't seen such an amount. That's why he again made the goon faint through that electric gun and went with them while taking his getup to take the advance payment, and they took him to the house of the richest man in this city. There. He meets a lady named Greenbelt, and she gives him $50,000. She says this is an advance payment, 
the rest of the payment will be after the task is done. Taking the money, he again goes to the goon's house as a lady to take the watches, but the goon has released himself from the ropes when he reaches home. As he opens the door, he points a gun at him, then pounces on him and tries to end him. During this, Max was stomping his feet on the ground to escape. Due to this one of his shoes took off, and as this happened he came to his real form. The goon got shocked to see him but he captured him when he tried to run from there. He again tries to end him, but to escape, Max attacks him with his high heels. His heels were stabbed in that goon's neck and due to it he fell there, his neck burst and he started bleeding. The goon dies here, and Max becomes worried and scared to see this because he has never committed sin like this before. He runs from there, and being panicked, he forgets his watches and money there. He reaches home but isn't getting peace so to punish himself, he reaches the police station. He tells everything to the officers and handovers himself to them. But when the police reach that goon's house with him, they don't find the dead body and there wasn't even a drop of his blood. Money and watches also disappeared. Max is surprised to see all this and the police become furious because they think Max is mad. They think he tried to make them fools, so they say to Max, check yourself up at a mental hospital or get admitted to a mental asylum. After saying this, they left, and when Max came back to his shop, he found the money and watches. There were the high heels of that lady, and seeing them he became surprised and thought, who has done this? After it he was leaving while picking up the bag, but the barber of the nearby shop came and said, Max, son, what are you doing? You aren't opening the shop properly since your mom passed away and you often come. Why is all this happening? Max replies, Uncle, I'm going for some work right now. I have to return someone's money, so I will talk to you about it later. But the barber says you have spent the money on yourself. There is no need to be so kind. Max couldn't understand what he was trying to say, and because he was a good human being, he couldn't take anyone's money. That's why he doesn't pay attention to the barber and moves to return the money. He goes to the green belt as a lady and says that goon can't do the task you have assigned him, I've come on his behalf so take your money back. But hearing this the green belt says this money doesn't matter to me, I just need my work done, and saying this, she asks her men to attack Max. They attack Max and make him faint, later they kidnap him, but when they were taking him he changed his shoes and wore the shoes of the old man. The scary man who has marks on his face scares them while taking his getup now because he has a weird face so they get scared, their attention is diverted, and the car gets into an accident. They become injured, but Max somehow gets off the car and leaves. The next morning he was having a cold drink while sitting in his shop. It dropped there mistakenly, and he saw a page. It was a poster given to him by a girl who was a worker somewhere. And she wanted to save an old man because a few people forcefully wanted to vacant the old man's house. Seeing the poster, Max remembers that he is the old man whom Green Belt wanted to end through the goon. Max meets that worker girl the next day and tells her everything. Now they reach the old man to tell him about all this. The old man calls them inside and thanks them for telling me that a few people wanted to end me, but yes, I will not vacant this house at any cost. I have grown up here, and my memories are in this house so I will also die here. Max gets an idea and asks the size of that old man's foot. He says 10 fifths so Max thinks, hmm, perfect plan. The next day, he goes to meet Greenbelt while wearing the old man's shoes and taking his get up. He says, I will vacant the house but in return I want 1 lakh dollars. This deal was quite fair and Greenbelt agrees to it and the next day her men convey the amount to him. Max gives that amount to the old man, and he moves to meet his son while taking the money. Later, Greenbelt moves to check that old man's house to see if he has left it vacant or not. She reaches there, and the old man is sitting there. We found out that he is the cobbler Max. Greenbelt says, if you got the amount, then why didn't you vacate the house? He surprisingly says money. I didn't get any money, and I will not vacate this house. Greenbelt becomes furious hearing this and says, you have lived many years of your life and I will kill you. No one will find what happened to you, and after it, I will also end your son. Hearing her warning, a reporter comes out along with the camera, and Greenbelt gets shocked to see him now. To make her angrier, Max winks, and due to it, Greenbelt becomes furious. She moves forward to hit him, 
All this was recorded on camera and played on TV live, and because of it Greenbelt was arrested because of corruption. The next day, Max was at his shop, and the worker girl came to him and said, thank you, let's go for dinner tonight. Max agreed because he liked her. The goon's friend was angry, so to convince her, he went to her house and gifted her those expensive watches. After it when he was returning, a few people kidnapped him, considering him the real goon and taking him somewhere. Meanwhile their car gets into an accident, and Max also gets faint, but when he comes to his senses, he finds himself at the barber shop. He says, while giving him marmalade son, eat it a bit, but Max says, no uncle, I don't want to eat it because I don't like it. He says don't argue and have it, because it is dangerous for you the way you are moving into different bodies, and only this marmalade could help you. Max becomes surprised to hear this and asks, what do you mean? How do you know I moved into different bodies? On it, he says, Son, what do you think? I'm just a barber here and do haircuts. No, I am also a cobbler. I also work like you, saying that he takes off the shoes and comes in his real getup. He was none other than Max's father and seeing him. Max doesn't believe his eyes. He becomes astonished because his father was alive and used to work as a barber in the nearby shop of Max. He disappeared the dead body of the goon and placed the bags of money and watches at Max's shop, so there would not be any problem with his son, and he would become rich with that amount of money and watches. That's why he said as a barber, use this money for yourself, he becomes happy to find his father happy. He hugs him immediately, but also becomes enraged after a while, so he asks, don't. You ever miss me or mom? He says I do miss you always. I used to meet you but couldn't meet your mom because of the wrong tasks I did because of them. The evil people were behind me. Max asks, okay, tell me from where did we get that magical machine? He replies that a great man had given it to your grandfather's father, who came into our lives as an angel. Your grandfather's father saved his life. In return, he gave him this machine that changed our lives. After telling him this, he shows him the family inheritance and the place he took him was full of shoes. Those were not ordinary pairs of shoes, but the shoes of the great people past of his father and grandfather. You can assume how valuable those shoes were. Now Max says, let's go home dad. His dad says let's go son but not from the front door but from the back door and takes him to the garage from the back door where a black expensive car was parked. It was everyone's dream to drive it and his father has a driver to drive it. Later his father tells his son, except for this. We have a huge business, you just know that we work to mend shoes, we also do dry cleaning, and the clothes we get we also use them for our purpose while sewing them with this machine. The thing to change getup is not only with shoes but also with clothes, and the clothes are also of great rich people, so we can take anyone's getup in the world. It is not an ordinary thing, but it is bravery and power. Saying this, they sit in their car and leave for the house. This life gives them happiness, and they were living peacefully, as this movie concludes.